PCG is getting bigger and bigger. So here are three tips and tricks that I think everyone should know when using PCG. And if you stick around to the end, I'll throw in a bonus one. Starting with this one here. If you have any kind of surface and you would like to spawn something on top of it, for example, I want to spawn some plates, but I have them actually follow the circle here of this table. If you open up your mesh and then go to the socket manager, you can add some sockets. So if I add a socket here, you'll see we'll get a point there at origin. We just need to bring it up to the height of the table and we can know the height of the table here in the top left, approximate size, X, Y, and Z, the height is 54. We can bring the relative location to 54. And then if I just move it to one of the edges, we'll have our first point. Then we make one more, bring it to the right side, move it over and do that for the other two as well. Once you have all four sockets like this, you can go ahead and shift select all of them and under advance, give it a tag. For example, I'll call mine plates because that's where I'm going to be spawning our plates. And that's all we need to do here. Now we can go ahead and create our piece graph. Right click, go to PCG, grab us a PCG graph, create an empty graph. This is going to be our PCG table and plates. I'll go ahead and just drag this out into the world and open up the graph. In here, I'm going to right click and search for get actor data because we want to know the location of this actual graph in the world. That's where we're going to put the table. So for mode here under data retrieval settings, we're going to change it to get single point. And already we can go ahead and drag out and search for static mesh spawner, add ourselves a mesh entry. And in here, we want to plug in our table. So just like that is going to get plugged in and you'll see in the world we do get our table but you'll see it is actually scaled because the actual volume here is scaled so right before this i'm just going to drag out and search for apply scale to bounce instead of scaling the object it'll scale the bounce instead and now we have a properly sized table in the middle now to spawn the plates on top of here we need to get the information on the sockets so i'm going to right click and search for execute blueprint and then in the detail panel search for socket you'll get a mesh socket to points we want to grab that now it takes a static mesh input we want to just plug that in automatically because it has a static mesh here that we can plug in we can actually grab the static mesh from the static mesh spawner in the static mesh spawner out attribute name we can call this mesh and now if i press a on it and scroll all the way to the right you'll see there's our mesh that is the one being spawned by this point so from here i can just use something like get attribute from point index the input source for it will be mesh because that's the one we want to get at index zero because we're only spawning one and you'll see now we have a single mesh here and that is going to go into our static mesh and now we are sampling the sockets from this mesh and then the mesh socket to points we want to give it a tag we called it plates so we'll type in plates here if i press a on this node you can now see we there's our four points so we are actually reading them all correctly the only thing is they're not at the right location they need to be at the location of this by default it will be in world location so we just need to use a copy points node the source will be these points and the target will be the original static mesh spawner location so that will put them exactly on top and if i can press d on this to debug them you'll see in our world there's our four points but again we want to spawn plates on here instead of doing it's just static mesh spawner drag out use a create spline node and make it a closed loop then if we just use a simple spline sampler set to number of samples we can specify how many plates do we want and then we just use a simple static mesh spawner and plug in our mesh entry so i'll plug in my plates here and now you'll see we have eight plates that's way too many here let's say something like six and you'll see there we go we now have plates covering this area just like that and this means you can do this for any shape of table or anything you'd like have a rectangle table a weird l-shaped table rounded table any kind of table you want any kind of surface you want in general create some points create a spline from them and then just go ahead and sample it whether on the spline or you could even do on interior to put things specifically inside of an area easy peasy tip number two involves a pcg spline system so here i just have a regular blueprint with a simple closed loop spline and a pcg component with an empty graph in it inside of this empty graph i want to show you something with the spline that you might not be aware of if i right click and search for get spline data to get our spline as normal and then use a spline sampler we can change this to on interior and turn on unbounded because we don't have a volume in here you will see we have our points all on interior that's great but did you know you can actually give it density based on the thickness of this on the spline sampler when you're doing on interior on the right here there's an interior density fall off curve if i double click on it i'll get this window now i can just right click and click add a key and let's say at a time of zero it'll be a value of one and we'll add another key at a time of one of a value of zero so we have a nice linear gradient here you will now see we automatically 
have a density fall off here that goes right from the center to the outside. And this works based off distance. If I make this really long here or really thin, you could see basically from the thickest point, this distance is bigger, so it, it gets brighter. This is the thinnest, so it gets the thinnest here. If I make this super big, you'll see the fall off is based off whatever that distance is. It is now relative to itself. But what this means is really easily you can use a point filter range, set the target attribute to be density, open up max thresholds and min threshold and use constant for both and then open them up. And you could say something like, I want to only keep between 0.3 and 0.7. And if I just debug this inside filter, we now have just a little area here between 0.3 and 0.7 really easily. And it will dynamically adjust to the size of whatever you make it. So don't forget when you're doing on interior, you do have this control. It is extremely useful in certain scenarios. You could even use something like this combined with the table to put something potentially either just in the center or just on the edges because you can just use the spline of this just like here. Not only that, but you can actually combine it with another execute blueprint note. So if I right click search for execute blueprint and search for a scale. There's a scale by density. Let's say scale minimum is zero, scale max is one. We can need to plug that in by manually because it's zero, 0, by default. We can plug that into scale to density and then that goes to the debug. And you'll see that we now also automatically are scaling these points based on the density. So the ones closer inside are bigger and the ones further away are smaller. So that's a simple nifty trick that you can implement into a lot of EPCG graphs. For tip number three, I once again have another spline here. This one's just doing an interior. Same kind of system, gets spline data, spline sampler interior, unbounded. For this one, there's a nifty node that I think not too many people use, and that one's called spatial noise. If we go ahead and grab this and just plug this in right before the debug, just as is, changing nothing on this node, you will see that, okay, well, there's a little darker area here, a little bit of a lighter area here. Again, we're looking at the density here. So what's actually going on? Well, this is a Perlin noise. It's a Perlin 2D noise. We can do caustic, Voronoi, edge masks, a few different ones, but it's a little bit complicated to figure out how it's supposed to be working. So let me show you a few things. Start with the transform. Transform is where you affect the scale of it. Instead of one, we'll set this to 10 across the board for the scale. Now let's take a look and you can see we now have an actual gradient here of a noise. And by the way, this is in world space. So this is not local space. So if you need something to change based on the world, well, you have a world space noise now. The iterations here are basically how smooth it is. I'll leave this on screen while I change it. The default now is four. If I change it to one, you'll see it becomes very blurry. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see after five, really, it, you stop being able to tell much iterations because there's not enough detail here. But not only that, but it also has contrast controls. So if we boost the contrast, check it out. We can get little islands of areas if we want, whether it's the lighter color or the darker color. And again, it's still all world space. And for the contrast here, I just adjusted the contrast as you noticed here. There's also the overall brightness. So if you go from zero to like 0.1, you can see the darker spots get overwritten a lot. Mostly this is because of the contrast. If I change contrast back to one, you can see it gets a lot lighter again. And this is zero brightness, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. You can see how this works. You're also able to change the location and the random offset for it, as well as the seed. So if you just change the seed, of course, you will randomize the pattern. But this is just Perlin 2D. There's a few different ones. For example, Caustic 2D, which gets a very different design, as you can see. Same controls, of course. The only one that I think needs something specific is the Voronoi 2D one. I've not been able to get it to actually get a good Voronoi. If you need an actual Voronoi, this GEX is a little bit better. And I have tutorials on that actually on the channel if you want to check out. But the other ones are Fractional Bronian 2D here, which again gives another different kind of noise. This one may be interesting to get a field of flowers in these patterns, for example, different flowers here and there. And the final one is an edge mask. Now edge mask is different because edge mask also gives you an edge mask 2D mode. If I take a look here, this is what an edge mask does, which doesn't make that much sense right now. It's actually easier to understand what the edge mask is doing. If I up the contrast a lot, I will set the contrast to 100 for this so you can really see. And now if we take a look, it's almost creating basically a rectangle here. 
if I adjust these points, it is trying to its best to fit effectively a rectangle in this area. If we change the edge mask noise, we can change it to different patterns. And you'll see basically the edge here gets slightly altered. I'll go ahead and reduce the contrast back to one. So we have the nice fall off. And then you have a few things like edge blend distance. This is the edge blend distance at default of one at 0.5 you can see it gets shorter at two, it gets longer, three, four, five. You can see that noise is there. So if we change it from Bronian now to Perlin, you can see the noise from that edge is coming together. That's why it kind of makes a square when you look at it as a high contrast thing. There's also the edge blend curve offset. So it's kind of almost the opposite. This is at one, if I increase it to two, three, four. So it almost does the opposite versus making it darker in it. And this gets brighter from the inside out. And the last one, of course, is the curve intensity, which effectively is like the contrast. If I increase it, it increases the contrast that is being created here. So you can get a lot of interesting shapes here, just like that. This one's not very commonly used. I haven't seen anyone really talking about it. So I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention because this is really cool to creating world-based randomness that you know will automatically attach itself to. Because you can see, no matter if I move the entire thing or just move a section of it, it is very much world position based. So those are the quick three tips and tricks that I wanted to show you guys that I think everyone should be aware of at the very least when working with BCG. Now, as always, I want to give a big thank you to my Patreons that support what I do. It really means a lot. If you like to join the community, the link will be in the description below as always. And if you stuck around till the end, let me show you one little bonus tip as promised. If you ever find yourself needing a specific number of points, you might have found yourself using the create points node. The create points node allows you to specify a point that you have and you can add more here. And if I press A on it, you can see I have these four points. There's also the point generator from HLSL. This allows you to create a bunch of points under point generator. You can specify the number of points here and you'll see there's a 256 points. The problem with these is if I open them, none of them have a value you can plug in here that just says create that many points. They're both hard coded. I don't know about you, but I don't know HLSL to customize this to expose this. And there's no way of adding an option here, but there is a node that allows you to create points with the value you want. And that's actually using this execute blueprint. In here, if I search for create points, this execute blueprint one, if we open it up, has a bunch of inputs, including a count. If I create a integer here, we can set this, for example, to be 100, plug that into count, and then we can take a look at this blueprint node. There's a few different options, but if we just change this point creation method from, from point array to from single point or from single position, it will go by the count. So if I press A on here now, you will see we have 100 entries. If I change this create constants to 50, we'll have 50 entries, 10 entries, whatever you'd like automatically very easily you can go ahead and create specifically the amount of points you want using an input and then if you'd like to you can use an attribute partition change what it uses from last to index and now we have basically 10 things we can loop on so using this simple system we can specify how many times we want something to loop you don't need to duplicate points you don't need to have points ready specify how many times you want something to loop plug this into a loop graph and you're all set and i would recommend looking through those execute blueprint nodes some of them are quite interesting. And if you want to learn some more PCG, check out this video right over here to continue your PCG learning journey.